Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, Happy November. Yeah, I was I was going to say Merry Christmas, oh. unless you don't want to go with that. No, that's fine. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Okay, so you're... <laughs> or you're, Happy Holidays. Um, we're we're all inclusive here on this podcast. Right, right. But I just meant, like, are you in the crowd that's like, okay, the holidays start right after Halloween, or... Mm. Okay, so personally, I hate every holiday after Halloween, so I just don't care. I'm neither. Yeah, I mean, I... don't care. Like, if you want to make Christmas now, we can... Christmas can be now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can go both ways. Like, some days I'm like, okay, I do love the holidays, and they're so nice and cozy but then also i hate having to buy gifts and stuff oh yeah no i just yeah i'm not really i'm a grinch that's what i am right to put it very yeah so i mean it's fun i guess just i think it's like just stressful (laughs) for me that's why i don't like it definitely so yeah well okay so let's just go back to halloween then yes okay um, so this Halloween, I went to Taylor's house. Mm-hmm. It was so fun. Um, hmm. I dressed up as Raven from Teen Titans, and, yes, and Garrett I was, was Beast Boy. Yes, Garrett was Beast Boy, also from Teen Titans, and I figured out my costume very last minute. I was a demon, slash devil, slash, you know, my normal self. <laughs> yeah, like, we wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, honestly. of course not. Of course not. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. We had, like, a little costume party, you know, mm-hmm. all the fun, all the spooks. Oh Partied my gosh. a little bit too hard. Oh, but. party. Girl boss way too close to the sun um, <laughs> on that. Sunday yeah. was ha- actual Halloween. I did not a single thing. Right. I didn't mean, move. I had to drive all the way home. So. Oh, I truly don't know how you did it. I would never have been able to do that. Oh, and I did actually drive all the way home and ended up getting home with one of my tires on 10 psi oh no not on 10 yeah it was really bad oh, my God. um and we found out i ran over a screw so um yeah that was fun i did um make my dad take it in to get it replaced <laughs> so. well i mean he did volunteer so i'm not gonna say i made him but yeah i mean there you go yeah i mean if i lived with my dad i would make i'm still already make him do everything for me Mm -hmm. but i always make my dad do it like in a very short time crunch because you know i live far away from him so right at least you're nicer about that i know (laughs) that really sucks though i've ran over a screw before it's so annoying Mm -hmm. like that's not your fault the screw was in the road right and it's like there's nothing you can do to stop that right it's like i don't even know how it happened because it we noticed it like 20 minutes from home yeah and you're like we're just gonna (laughs) <laughs> keep going yeah i would have yeah crazy well yeah halloween is fun we had trick-or-treaters <laughs> it was so fun guys having being an adult and giving little cute kids candy is so fun that sounded way creepier <laughs> than i intended it to <laughs> but i just mean it. it was so fun to like have cute little trick-or-treaters come to the door and they're like happy halloween trick-or-treat like blah 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 they were cute you're lucky, though, because I didn't even get that. You didn't get a single one? Well, okay, I, um, my sister was sitting in the driveway, Victoria, and, um, she was passing out candy for a while, and then I came out, and there were no one, there was, like, no one left. Like, oh. there was oh. a good, like, 15 kids that came up, and then after that, it was, like, nothing. You I missed like, it. Oh, my God, I missed it all. You missed the party. Wow, yeah. that's tragic. Is what that is. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's very tragic. unfortunate. Well, aside from our holiday fun, I suppose, um, also go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, please. Por favor. Yes, definitely. But I suppose, unless you have something else to talk about, we can go ahead and get into the stories for this week. Yeah, we can totally get into it. Um, so mine this week is a mystery at sea. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. We love a good mystery at sea. Yeah, from the 1800s too. Oh, so. old one. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and actually, most of the stuff I got for this, for my little notes here, um, was from uh, a YouTube video 
from um now why am i forgetting the buzzfeed unsolved That's oh what it, yeah love Bun buzzfeed unsolved they i know I love, so funny. I love watching their videos they crack <clears throat> me up so most of it's from them so i wanted to you know give a shout out um so this week i'll be doing the mary celeste oh okay i don't mm -hmm. know that much about it but i think i've definitely seen this buzzfeed video okay all right so we're gonna start with a ship called the amazon actually Ooh, jeff bezos yeah right right <laughs> um so it was i believe originally like a, a british ship um and it was after it was being built it like didn't want to budge from its perch to <laughs> set sail oh wow so starting off on a bad note honestly already yeah um and when it did eventually set sail for its maiden voyage uh the captain got pneumonia and died so Yikes. starting off really bad um <laughs> it's we're about one sentence into this and people are already it's already going downhill I know, yeah. <laughs> the ship is just not it. Um, so after that, the ship was damaged like many times over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the bigger damages it took on, um, it in 1867, it crashed into some rocks and the like investors of the ship couldn't even afford to repair it this time. Oh no. Um, or to get it back. So they kind of just left it there. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so in comes this guy, Alexander McBean. <laughs> McBean. I just had to add that because this guy's like, that name is just <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, he was an investor, which I guess, like, I don't really know much about ships, but I guess there's, like, people who invest in them and, like... I mean, yeah, that would make sense. To go make deliveries and stuff. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, he was an investor. He ended up taking the ship off the rocks or like paying to do it and sold it to um, this guy, John Howard Beatty. And then that guy sold it to Richard W. Haynes. So it sort of changed hands a few times. Mm -hmm. And then Haynes, he fixed it up and renamed it the Mary Celeste. Oh. So now we have the Mary Celeste. And then after Haynes fixed it up, um, his creditors, like the people he was investing with, like took the ship because he couldn't afford the loan payments. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then it was sold to a New York shipping company and given a new captain. So this is sort of the start of the story, um, mm -hmm. the beginning. <clears throat> after all of that, that little backstory there, um... So the new captain was Benjamin Spooner Briggs, which Spooner is kind of funny to me too, um, <laughs> but <laughs> he was very experienced. He had 18 years of sailing behind him. Oh, wow. Um, and for his first voyage on this ship, uh, they set sail on November 7th, 1872, and they had 1,700 barrels of industrial alcohol. Oh, that's some serious amount of alcohol. I know. But I think industrial means, like... No, that means, like, is that 100% alcohol. Or, like, rubbing alcohol. Like, that's not for drinking. Right? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, they were taking it from New York to Genoa, Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the ship was Captain Briggs, his wife... And he brought his two-year-old daughter, which, oh. I, I mean, cool, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. and a crew of seven. Oh, that's a small crew. I was expecting way more. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of is. But, I yeah. Uh, so, I guess there's like ten people on board if you count the two-year-old <laughs> yeah. as like a full person. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that was the, the ship. Um, and... So they set sail and just, like, they ended up getting across the sea and almost made it to their destination. But unfortunately, on December 4th, a Canadian vessel, the De Gratia, they saw the Mary Celeste about 400 miles left of the Azores, um, 
which are like these islands near Portugal. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just saw it like floating there. And they're like, um, that's kind of weird. That um, really weird. And they tried to signal it, but nobody answered. Interesting. So they're like, mm, not a good sign. Uh, so three of the crew of like the, the De Gratia, they boarded the Mary Celeste. Um, and they found the ship that was totally abandoned. What? Where did they go? No, exactly. Especially because there's no sign of struggle. There was, n- like, no damage, really. Hmm. So, it was really weird. Like, I I think there was, like, a little bit of damage, but not enough to make them all just leave, you know? Yeah. And the cargo was pretty much intact, too. There oh. were... Hmm. Yeah, so it's like, if it's pirates, they didn't steal anything. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not pirates, because mm-hmm. they would have taken the alcohol 100%. Yeah, definitely. Um, there were actually nine barrels that were empty. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll talk about theories about that later. But um, And there was also a six-month supply of food and water. On the boat? Yeah. Hmm. So it's like, the more and more I talk about this, the more it's like, it does not make sense. Um, so the lifeboat was missing, and so was the, okay, now these things, I don't even know what they are, a chronometer, <laughs> a sextant, navigation book, and register. I was going to say that sounds kind of, I mean, I don't know what those are, but like just boating supplies that you would need to like, like right. I'm assuming like one of them's like a compass or something of that. Yeah. Something like that. To yeah. try to, like, Actually, help them I get think, somewhere. I'm pretty sure the chronometer is, like, a watch. Yeah. That <laughs> makes sense. Um, but the other things, like this, a sextant, I don't really know what that is. No, me neither. <laughs> but they were missing. So they're like, okay. So they took all these things and left on the lifeboat? Right. Like, why? <laughs> right. So, yeah, there was no sign of the lifeboat or anybody on the boat. Like, they sort of looked around, I guess, in the water. They're like, do we see a life foot out there? Like, no. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went to the log, because um, I'm pretty sure all most ships have, like, a log of, like, what is happening on the boat. And um, the last log was on November 25th. And it was, so that's, like, 10 days before the ship was found. Mm-hmm. And it said that they were about six miles off of Santa Maria. Which is part of the islands that they were found by. Okay. Um, and the logs were written every hour. So that means whatever happened to them was after it was written. So, yeah. And it was written at 8 a.m. Oh, wow. Somebody was working real early in the a.m. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So that would mean that... Um, on November 25th, before, like, between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., they, like, took off in the lifeboat for some reason. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and they were, they said that they were six miles off of Santa Maria, so, um, that's, like, way farther away than, um, where the boat was found, because they said that it was found 400, 400. miles off Yeah, of that's it. what I was gonna say. So. Hmm. That's it, weird. So I guess it just, like, it floated that far, you know? Yeah. Also, before you move on, I wanted to say that I looked up what a sextant is, and it is a instrument to be able to measure, um, what's it called? Uh, out- latitude and altitudes and longitudes. Oh, okay. That so, makes sense. yeah, basically directions. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So the De Gratia, the crew they took the ship to gibraltar which is eight miles or not eight miles 800 miles east of where it was found um and then it was sold to new owners Hmm. um and i think they did do like some investigating before it was sold but but yeah it was sold Hmm. so what happened (laughs) there's some there's some theories about what could have happened here um, most people believe that the captain and the crew left the ship on purpose, but they, it's like, well, why did they though? Yeah, literally, why did they? 
because that's what it looks like they just left on purpose but the reasoning why is like what's mostly questioned mm -hmm. um the first uh the first theory is pirates of course mm -hmm. which we already sort of said probably not but <laughs> uh Here's here's some reasoning behind that, I guess. Uh, some people believe pirates because... Um, or they believe pirates came and forced everyone off the ship. Or or even that the crew of the De Gratia were pirates. Oh. And took, they took the ship and killed everyone on board. Oh. Well, there's no blood. Right. Like, there's no sign of a struggle or anything. No. Hmm. So... I mean, if it was the crew of this other ship, I would think that they would just, they somehow forced them to get on the lifeboat. Yeah. And then just took the ship. Yeah, but that also wouldn't explain why the boat was 400 miles away. Yeah. No, right. Unless they're, like, lying, maybe. Yeah. Which, yeah, they, they definitely could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not, like, tracking back then. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, just, the let's just look at the black box of the boat, guys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the crew of the De Gratia did get paid by, like, the insurance. <laughs> hmm. Okay, that's because, very suspicious. I know. Me. But they did only get a small percentage. They only got a one-sixth of the policy amount because yeah. the people, the insurance people thought something was fishy. Okay. Well, that's good. I guess yeah. they only got a little bit. That makes it look a little bit less suspicious, but I mean, they didn't know that they were going to be going to, like, you know, going to get less. No, that makes it seem more suspicious yeah, because no, yeah. the insurance yeah. thinks that there's something, something going on. Yeah. But also they still got paid. Like, that's, hmm. that's bad. I'm just confused. <laughs> Why did they get paid? Because they found the boat. So, I mean, so? I don't really know how it works <laughs> or if it still works that way, but I guess if you like just find a ship out there, you can bring it in and, you know, you'll be like, oh, well, I well, found your ship for you. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but, hmm. Okay, I say maybe for that theory. Okay, yeah, possibly, we'll see. Um, and also going along with this theory of pirates on like why it I don't think it could be. Um, nothing was taken taken off the ship. So... Yeah, and all those barrels. I mean, they that is probably worth a lot of money. The mm -hmm. alcohol. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was pirates. Yeah, and they had like jewelry and money on board, and they just didn't take it. Yeah, definitely not pirates. It, see, if it was pirates, it was definitely this other ship. Yeah. Because they probably just left it there to make it seem like there wasn't, like, to make it seem mysterious, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Um, there is a few other theories. Um, one is that the crew started a mutiny. Oh. Um, and that they drank some of the alcohol on board, which is like... Can you drink that stuff? I don't think... I honestly don't think that you can. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there were... Apparently, there were two crew members that seem a little bit suspicious because their stuff was not found on board mm. and everybody else's stuff was. Okay, yeah, that's suspicious. Um, this is Volkert and Boy Lorenzen. Okay. Um... So maybe, like, they took their stuff and left, right? Yeah. But it was looked into and discovered that their stuff was lost in a shipwreck earlier that year. <laughs> so Interesting. Okay, so not suspicious. Yeah, not suspicious at all. <laughs> See, it's like everything about this is like, hmm, I really don't know. Um, Okay, so the next theory is that everybody abandoned the ship because the captain made a miscalculation. Or a mis somebody made a miscalculation. A miscalculation in in what? Uh, like that the boat was going to sink or something. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, so, 
Yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about ships, and I don't really know about them, so okay, we'll great, see if great, it makes great, sense. Great. <laughs> uh, so there's this thing called a sounding rod. Okay. And you can use it to see how much water is in your boat. Uh, okay. So basically, it goes down this like long tube to the bottom of the ship, and it like makes a noise so you can see if the ship is filling with water or not. Okay. I think I've seen that that in movies. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it makes a different noise if there's water. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is um, part of the theory because the sounding rod they were using was left on, like, on the deck, not where it was supposed to be. Oh, okay. Um, And this was, like, one of the only things that was out of place. So it looked like somebody dropped it and, like, left in a panic. So maybe they really thought they were sinking. Yeah, right. Um, And so they could have used it to measure the water and then made a miscalculation because they had just had weather that could have messed with, you know, the results of this little Mm -hmm. test. Yeah. Because if it rains and water goes through the deck into the bottom, that doesn't mean that your boat's going to sink. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, do you know if there was water found in the boat, like, when the other... I mean, obviously, it wasn't sinking, though, because it floated for 10 days. Yeah, exactly. No, there... That's the thing. There was water in there, but not enough for it to be a problem. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, then mm-hmm. that's so weird. Yeah, I know. Um, and especially since the captain had been sailing for 18 years, yeah, so he, he probably wouldn't make that mistake. No, he knew what he was doing. There's no way. Exactly. Something must have happened. Something weird must have happened. Right. I have my own theory. All right, we'll I'll, get to it. I'll, yeah, I'll get to it later. <laughs> I feel like I might bring it up. We'll see. You probably will. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one, next theory is that there was a sea quake. Oh, what's that? I mean, I, I can guess what it is. Yeah, like an earthquake, but a sea quake. That's, I, that is crazy. <laughs> Would yeah. you feel it moving? Yeah, no, I feel like a that would be even crazier because it just makes the waves. It really makes it like bad. a tsunami, right? It could. I'm pretty sure that's what makes a tsunami. Or yeah. quakes under the water. Yeah. Well, I think um, that we would have known that then. I don't think it does every time. Oh, but... okay. Yeah, no, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, so the area that the ship was found, um, is actually one of the most seismically active in the world. <laughs> Okay. So, that's, so it's a I mean, possibility, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big possibility. Um, and there is actually evidence that an 8.5 magnitude oh. sea quake occurred, like, a month after the Mary Celeste was found. After it was found? Yes. So that's what I thought, too, when I was, like, reading this. I was like, yeah, afterwards? like, after? But there could have been a foreshock. So, like, I guess... Okay. So, instead of an aftershock, it's a before shock. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, So, this foreshock could have hit the ship, and people say that it could have opened the nine barrels that were found empty. Oh, yeah. Um, And then there would be, like, alcohol fumes throughout the ship. Mm -hmm. And maybe the fumes made them evacuate because they thought something bad was happening. Listen, I feel like that is really, really grasping at straws. I know. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I know. That's what I thought, too. I was like, okay, I'm I'm with you on the sea quake. I'm yeah, with you on fully. The, you had But then, me. like, and then, the fumes of the alcohol. And then the fumes of the alcohol. And then the, the sea quake's only going to open nine of the 1,700 right. alcohol no, right, barrels. Right. <laughs> right. And all the other ones are going to be fine. <laughs> right. No, and... After I tell you this, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, definitely not. So the barrels that were found empty, they were actually made of a different type of wood than the other ones. Okay, come on now. And they were most likely empty because the alcohol just seeped out of them. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Yeah, So so the alcohol just seeped through the wood and there would not be any fumes if it got out that way. Yep. So. Yep, that sounds about right. So. Okay, so then basically, if we're looking at that evidence, then nothing was weird on the boat. Not even the nine missing alcohol containers, because it just... Exactly. No, exactly. 
That's so weird. And back to that, that's why people think there was not a sea quake because there was nothing out of place. Like things yeah. were fallen over. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like all the other things were fine, and there was some huge quake. I don't think so. I don't mm -hmm. think so. Yeah. No, definitely not. Um, so this is one of the last theories, um, that I think, I think I'm getting to what you're, you were thinking, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Um, aliens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, so... I'm just saying it's not a bad idea. They disappeared. And these people have never been seen again. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were never. Seen yeah. Again. That's because they're on a different planet right now. With the aliens. Right, right. <laughs> so they could have been abducted by aliens or taken by a sea monster. Oh, a sea monster. The Kraken got um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel like the sea monster is less likely because it would have, like, stirred the ship up more, you Oh, know? it definitely would have stirred the ship, so. Yeah. Not a yeah, sea monster. So... It's aliens. Mm-hmm. Yes, but also was... the aliens would have had to take the lifeboat, too. Or some people got out <laughs> when they realized people were getting abducted. True. Yeah, could be. Hmm. Hmm. Much to think about. Um, really? Yeah. Okay, so also, so that's like pretty much it for all the theories, um, but in 2002, this person, Anne McGregor, she started diving into the mystery mm -hmm. um, and discovered that the ship was like way off course and uh, she theorized that they were using a faulty chronometer. Oh, okay. Which is, I looked it up, um, it's a watch, basically, it tells time. Mm hmm So, I don't really know why it's called a chron chronometer and not just, like, a clock, but... Well, it's probably because it was in the 1800s, right? Yeah, it might be different. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know, but anyways, they were using a faulty chronometer, so it could have, like just messed with their schedule and stuff and they thought they were in a yeah. different place than they were and well that would make sense actually yeah so she says that they were off course and uh some things in the ship might not have been go working well too like they were clogging pipes and random stuff like that so they just abandoned ship to go back to the azores the islands okay and then the, and then what and that's it. They just, like, that's why they got in their lifeboat and left. Oh, but she doesn't have any explanation for, like, why they were never seen again or anything? <laughs> right. No, but honestly, I I feel like in the 1800s, like, if you say they were never seen again, it's like, okay, but how were you trying to look for them? <laughs> okay, yeah, no, yeah, that's a very good point. Like, I feel like it's really easy to not ever be seen again in yeah, the, in the 1800s. 1800s. No, it definitely is. Like I mean, today, could, that with yeah. this is not a thing, but back then, definitely. Mm hmm Yeah, like, they definitely could have disappeared, but they also, I mean, I think it's possible they could have just actually got to the island, you know? Yeah. Or maybe they did get into the lifeboat to get, to go back to these islands and then uh, died at sea. Yeah, drowned or something. Yep. Hmm. Well, I guess so, that's probably yeah. what happened, but I... It's just still so weird. It's just like it's. I don't have closure, and it doesn't know, sit right with me. Yeah, that's why it's a mystery. Okay, well, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like not having answers. That's our whole podcast. Like. I know, <laughs> and I never have answers. Okay, but this podcast is in hopes to find answers. <laughs> right, right. Are we gonna go back and do the research? Try to find <laughs> what happened. Nope. The Mary Celeste. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think we're gonna find anything. So mm -hmm. <laughs> also, um, so they they say they did like a little um like investigation on the ship, but how good of an investigation do we think it was? Oh, I think it was like, none. I feel like it was none. Right, and they, they also had sailed it back eight hundred miles. Like, these oh, random exactly. crew members yeah. sailed it all the way back, and then people got on the ship and, like, investigated. So, it's like, I mean, they probably could have moved stuff. Oh, definitely. And, and like, I don't know. It's, 
And there's no fingerprints, no DNA, nothing like oh, no. that. So it's like, how would they even find anything? Just they by wouldn't. going in and looking, they're like, oh, yeah, it looks fine to me. Exactly. And there's literally <laughs> no evidence to find, even. There was no hope yeah, in ever true. finding these people. Or, well, you know, yeah. like, figuring out what happened. I mean, I guess they could have went over to those islands and, like, checked. But Well, okay, my question is, why did they not? I mean, maybe they did. I, I guess I didn't really see that. Yeah. But. I just but know. nothing I read said that anybody did, so... I mean, I don't no, know. if they did, they definitely would have said it, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so that, that one's a mystery. Yeah, that really is a mystery. That's really crazy. I can't. I literally can't. I just want to know. Like, what about the two-year-old? Don't tell me that baby died. Right. I know, I know. That's sad. I mean, I'm not... No. Was it a girl or a boy? Do we even know... They lived it a very. Was a, it was a baby girl. She lived a wonderful life. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she's she's alive today, actually. She's <laughs> two hundred years old. Oh my god! Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Well, interesting. You bring in the topic of aliens. Oh my. Because god. barely, <laughs> barely. <laughs> That's why my brain is on the aliens. Because this week, I am covering the legend of Valiant Thor. Now, you might not know what those words together even mean, because at one point in my life, I didn't either. But yeah, Valiant I Thor, <laughs> yeah, I figured you didn't. Valiant Thor is a name of a real life alien that has came to the United States <gasps> on record. No. Yes. Yes, indeed. Is this from that Demi show? Um, No. Have you have you seen that? No. Demi Lovato has like a whole series where oh, she like I think I saw a TikTok about it. Where maybe. they like go and do alien stuff. No, I haven't seen it. I I need to check it out. But yeah. so if this is in that show, I don't know. I haven't seen the show. But... I don't know. I didn't I didn't watch it, but I've heard of it. And yeah. It's, True. Yeah. Seems seems a little crazy. But I'll have to check that out for sure. Um but anyways, so yeah, I know this is literally insane to hear, but yeah. So basically, aliens are real, as I've said <laughs> since day one. Okay, okay. <laughs> is what I just have to say right now. So. I believe you. I'm going to tell you the story of a real alien that came to Earth from Venus to talk to President Eisenhower. Okay, you know how crazy that sounds. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, okay? I know that it does. But this story is literally corroborated by... It's like... It's like real. And there's pictures of this alien. Um, okay. You'll have to see. So let me just go ahead and get into it. So, yeah. on March 16th, 1957, three extraterrestrials from the planet Venus landed their ship in a farmer's field in Alexandria, Virginia. They were led by Commander Valiant Thor. That's what he called himself. That's apparently his name. Okay. The alien. Um, so local police showed up um, to their ship in the middle of this farm. And Valiant Thor asked them, you know, talked to them, whatever, and was like, hey, I need to meet with the president. And... Then those local police officers literally whisked him away and took him, drove him to the Pentagon. What? Okay, I know this is sounds cra- I know this is insane. But just follow just stay with Wait, me. Wait, okay. Where did you say he landed? <laughs> In Alexandria, Virginia, which is like 30 minutes outside okay. of um Washington DC. All right. Well, actually it's not even. It's like literally right outside. It's basically okay, Washington well, DC. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Um Yes. So, they drive him to the Pentagon, where he first met with the Secretary of Defense, Neil McElroy, at the time. Mm-hmm. And now, I my assumption, it doesn't ever say what they talked about when they were in the Pentagon um, that day with the Security of Defense, Secretary of Defense man. But my assumption is that, and, like, just the conspiracy theory in general, is that the, like, the... The higher ups in the United States at this time were already working with these aliens. 
And so they already knew who they were. It wasn't like he just showed up from Venus and was like, give me President Eisenhower right now. And they're like, yes, right. sir, alien. Like, no. Yeah, I was going to say, because <laughs> how would a creature from another planet know exactly. what a president is? Exactly. Or to, anything. You know? Or even who it was. Yeah. So yeah. they were definitely working with each other okay. previous to this, in my personal opinion. But mm -hmm. my guess as to why they went to the Pentagon first to meet with the Secretary of Defense was to make sure that he was, like, the real deal, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, before they were about to take him to the president, they were like, go see <laughs> go see this man and prove to me that you're an alien. That's my guess. Because then, right after that meeting, which only lasted, like, an hour, Valiant Thor was taken to the White House where he met with President Eisenhower. That's insane. <laughs> like, what I, is going on? I literally know. And I... Was just curious. My dad is actually like really smart with like presidents and stuff. And I was like, "Hey, do you know anything about President Eisenhower and aliens?" And he was like, "Yeah, like he fully like said aliens were real, and like he was so down for all this stuff and all this alien stuff, but they wouldn't let him release it." So I'll get more into that later. But even my dad knew about it, so I was like, "Interesting, hmm. very interesting." Yeah. That's... So back to the meeting with the president. So. In the meeting, obviously, we have Eisenhower and Valiant Thor, duh. Also, Vice President Richard Nixon at the time was there, and the Joint Chiefs were there. I don't know who that is, and I didn't look it up, so. But I'm just assuming it's, like, the Joint Chiefs of, like, you know, the top people in the, in the White House. So. Right. Whatever. <laughs> so, in yeah, this meeting. Yeah, sounds like something like that. Yeah. <laughs> something. So in this meeting, Valiant Thor explained that he represented the Intergalactic High Council and that this council is extremely worried that the Earth's nuclear capabilities and, like, us humans using those capabilities to destroy not only the human race, but everybody in the whole entire universe. Could it be that bad? Oh, my God. So, that's what I said at first. I was like, okay, this is a little bit dramatic. Yeah, but like, basically, what they're saying is that, because at this time, you know, this is around World War II and such things. Mm -hmm. This is when everybody was making nuclear weapons. And so, basically, everybody in the world at the time was at fear of a nuclear war. And what these aliens had to say was that they had done, like, tests and stuff and saying that if Earth was to have a nuclear war it the nuclear like whatever you want to call it like aftermath aftershocks of the nuclear war would destroy all the other planets in like at least our solar system i don't understand how though it was like that strong i mean i don't know i guess just the amount i mean it is of it definitely weapons. is it definitely yeah. is like that that was not surprise me at all so I don't know. Um, anyway, that's what the meeting was about. Okay, but also, if that's true, then it's still true today because there, I don't think the amount has oh, yeah, gotten less. Oh, no, yeah. It's still true today. <laughs> we'll get on to more of that later. So, okay. <laughs> um, Valiant Thor ended up staying on Earth for three more years as, like, an advisory person, like, to work in between the planets. So he literally continued to work with President Eisenhower until, until I guess he thought the threat was no more. I don't know. But, um, so as I was mentioning earlier, President Eisenhower really, really wanted to make the knowledge about aliens public knowledge. It was something that he felt like everybody should know about and that he was like, this shouldn't be kept secret anyway. Like, it's dumb. But, um, Nixon and the Joint Chiefs actually were the ones that convinced him that, like, if he released that information, like... It would not go over well. And I guess whatever they said convinced him enough because nothing really since then, since this, has been really released about aliens. So. Yeah. I don't know hmm. what they said, but I wish I did. Right. Like, why? If, if <laughs> it's really why? been since Eisenhower, like, why? Literally. How have we not found out anything else? I'm telling you, they're really trying to keep it hidden. And I'm just like, why? Mm -hmm. I'm, like, it's got to be something... Like, that would be good for us. And that's why they don't want us to have it. Um, or it's, like, because, like, the propaganda, like, they don't want people to know that the government and stuff is, like, actually that powerful to, 
like oh, explode yeah. the whole solar system. Yeah, I that's that's very true too. Because I mean, people people are already crazy at this point. Yeah, so maybe it is smart. Mm. <laughs> but anyways, so how how I know you're wondering how did this information come out and how do we really know that it happened? Where like where did the story even come from? So this information was first written down in a book by a guy named Frank Stranges and it is called Stranger at the Pentagon. And okay. you know, this sounds like okay, Taylor, come on now. It was written in a book. <laughs> like <laughs> this is a really good story that sounds like you made it up. No, right. no, 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 no. Frank Stranges was a federal marshal and chaplain who had top secret security clearance at the Pentagon. So for okay. for like 50 years. So like this man Oh, also, he was in the meetings, in some of the meetings with Valiant with the Thor. Alien. Yeah, with Valiant Thor, um, in the Pentagon. So, and he's like, I don't really care if y'all believe me, but I'm just telling you what I know. And his book and all his other stories have been um, supported by a couple other members of the defense team, as well as almost everybody in President Eisenhower's family. Oh, so. Oh. <laughs> So, well, it's sounding a little bit more believable. I know, I know. And, like, it really sounds so unbelievable. <laughs> I really understand the words that I'm saying. But, like, as far as I can tell, the government is not really even trying to hide this. Like, <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. out there, but, like, they're not openly talking about it, you know? See, I think stuff like that, it's like, we're just going to leave it there so people, exactly. so some people will believe it, but then... You know, no, I feel like that's what people think about even like conspiracy theories in general or like this podcast, even like, mm -hmm. oh, you guys are crazy thinking about all these crazy things. No, we're thinking about <laughs> it logically. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> no, I'm sometimes, just kidding. Sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, but no, yeah, no, literally. Some theories say, like, oh, the government just doesn't even touch some of these conspiracies and stuff just to, um, just. I don't know, so they can't prove it either way, I guess. Exactly. Know? And also, I feel like hiding things in plain sight sometimes works better yeah. than, like, hiding, like, trying to hide them for real. Yeah, that's sort of, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. I couldn't find the words. I got you. Hiding in plain sight, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it really is. Just like those people at the Denver International Airport with those alien signs. Yeah. Mm hmm We know what you're it's doing. It's connected. It is. <laughs> It honestly is, though. But So, as I mentioned, there are two real photographs of Valiant Thor um, that are confirmed to be like that. This is literally him. So, those will be on our Instagram. You're definitely going to want to see it. Um, oh, I'm excited. The most important part. What do these people look like? These aliens. They yeah. looked... They look human. They literally look human. But what is said is that they are depicted as blonde, always having blonde hair and blue eyes, and almost looking perfect. Okay, is this actual Thor? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like, he doesn't look like him, not really, sadly. Well, he does a little bit, but... <laughs> no, like the ancient... Oh, you're saying... Oh, uh, yeah, I was just talking about Marvel Thor, but they all look the same. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. But like, maybe. What if the people... What if they were right back then? Yeah, I mean, they, and those were the actual. Maybe like, they are. They're not gods. Gods, so they're just but aliens. Yeah. But and they yeah. live for thousands of years. Whoa. Okay. Oh my god. New theory. <laughs> okay, I mean, that his would name's actually Thor. Like what? His name's Valiant Thor. He was like, I gotta, I, I gotta change it up just a smidge, so I they mean, won't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's hmm. crazy. Maybe I wish he's just like a different version of that. Past True. He's Thor. the variant of Thor. <gasps> <laughs> Anybody who hasn't watched Marvel is sitting here like, what are they even talking about? I know. I'm I'm semi talking about Marvel, also talking about ancient, ancient, like, um, yeah, like the myths, myths. yeah, like yeah, mythology. No, I got that, but that's what Marvel's based on. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Oh my God. I always think about how it like. How do we not know that like mythology and stuff is not? I know. How real? do we know that that's not real? I don't know. It probably like was. it could be just aliens. It really it came it down. And so they were like, easily we're could gods. be, and that's mm -hmm. also what I think about all these like mysteries, myths, and legends that we talk about. Like, what if the things that these people are seeing are just all aliens? 
True. All these creatures and some monsters. I know. Well, some of them definitely are. But mm-hmm. anyways, back right, to yeah, these aliens. <laughs> um, so I know. So they look perfect. Whatever. Moving on from that. I know you're also wondering, how did they get to Earth? So mm-hmm. they said they're from Venus. Let's. So they flew on a ship called the Victory One from Venus. Of course they did. I don't know why it's called Victory One, but that's what it's called. Um, and allegedly, the remains of the ship today are hidden near Lake Mead, which is right outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. So. Hmm. Interesting. I'm like, should we go look for them? Because I'm trying to see the alien ship. Maybe. I don't believe that that ship is still there. Yeah. Um, personally. <laughs> but. I feel like it, if this is actually real, the government probably took it by now. Right. 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 That's what I'm saying, too. So, let's talk a little bit. So, they say they're from Venus. Okay? We can see Venus from here. Sometimes. And I'm just like, you know, we pretty much... I think we all can pretty much say that we don't think that there's any life on the planets in our solar system that we Mm -hmm. know. I mean, we're looking at Mars, you know, with little squinty eyes. But... (laughs) So, they, they say they're from Venus. These aliens that came down said that they don't live on the surface like we do, that they live inside of Venus. And that's how that we have, like, that's how at the time we weren't able to detect that they were living there because we couldn't, like, see them. Mm -hmm. Because apparently, like, they destroyed their world. So it's kind of like. And the gases. And the gases. Covered in, like, gases. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they have to live underneath the, like, in Mm -hmm. Venus instead of on the surface. And so. People say, like, oh, they don't want, like, first of all, they don't want us to destroy everything, <laughs> but also they don't want the same thing that happened to them possibly to happen to us, yeah. plus more. So It's all coming together. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it really does make sense. Um, yes. So, um, also, apparently, the other aliens that were um, with him um, was Valiant Thor's brother, whose name is Don. But okay. Dawn with two N's. <laughs> Spelled weird. All right. And then crewmates um, Thin and Teal. Their names mm-hmm. are really weird. I won't lie. <laughs> like, not weird to where, like, they're not names, but just, like, weird that they're, like, not normal names for here, at least. They're probably, like, translated, too. True. I wonder if they speak a different language. I wish... To- I mean, they spoke English, but I wonder if they know other languages. Mm-hmm. Wish I could have been there to ask them questions, man. Anyways... Um, let's see. Oh, okay. It's also really important to talk about how during this time period, literally that Valiant Thor was on Earth and like a year or two before, um, alien abduction talk spiked. Like people saying that they had been abducted by aliens was like, it was like at an all time high at this time. And so here's well where I'm going to bring it in. The I already had heard about this before, Valiant Thor, and my mind mm-hmm. was completely blown. And then I realized, as I was sitting watching my favorite show, American Horror Story, mm-hmm. this last season, it was two seasons in one, and the second part of the last season is called Death Valley, and it is all about Valiant Thor. <gasps> so I haven't seen it yet. Yes, definitely. Go watch that. But they... Kind of take a turn. I won't, like, you know, spoil anything. They kind of take it on a different turn of mm-hmm. a way. But most, a lot of what they said is accurate to the, the real story anyway. Until, you know, the extra stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's scary. They have to add more. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, definitely go watch that. Because it's amazing. Um, okay. Also, just a couple more fun facts for you about Valiant Thor. Um, it is said that his IQ was over 200, which is honestly just, like, unheard of. Like. Yeah, that's. Unheard hmm. of. But that's what Did you would he, think. Yeah. Did he say that, like, they live a long time? Or. You know, I couldn't. I don't think that they ever said. Not that I could find mm-hmm. anyway. Like, how old they were or anything. I looked, but I. None of that was listed. I, I kind of assumed, but I guess could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Ooh, okay. Another fun fact. So, um, Stranges, the guy that wrote the book first talking about Valiant Thor, um, actually talked about how he was 
like ambushed by the men in black multiple times after he's written that book and was literally i mean luckily he was top priority like in the cia and all this other stuff so like he knows how to fight and was able to get away from them but they were like trying to come for him allegedly that's so crazy which i mean if you just think about all of this like we like i know at least me that the men in black are real and i know what they do so this man saying that they attacked him obviously they would attack him they're trying to keep aliens a secret Mm -hmm. so i mean i think that makes sense honestly i have a theory about about the Men in Black movies, that they are hiding the truth in plain sight. 100%. Because it's like, oh, it's just a movie, it's fake. A exactly. But... I've always thought that. I was like, ain't no way. Like, when I found out that the Men in Black were actually a real thing, I was like, oh, no, that's it. That's exactly why they made mm -hmm. this movie. Because they make it, yeah, by making it into a movie, they cover it up by, like, you. whenever you oh, hear about it, you yeah. think of the movie. You don't think of it being a real thing. Exactly. Yep. That yep mm -hmm. it just is so true so true um okay while we're on that i just have to go into a little tangent because <laughs> okay. i it's eating me alive um and i'm i'm pretty much done with my story anyways so did you ever hear the conspiracy theory <laughs> this is really really a tangent but i don't okay. care that walt disney's head is in a cryo chamber in, at disney world Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was probably one of the first conspiracy theories I ever learned, like, in middle school. Right. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way. Like, I was like, because we all, we went as a band trip to Disney World, and we mm -hmm. were all like, guys, we have to go find Walt Disney's head. So then, whenever, whatever year it was, Frozen came out. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever. It's important to know that people thought that they were freezing his head mm -hmm. in some lower like part of the park and so then frozen came out and so now when you when i was in middle school when you googled walt disney like frozen disney frozen what would come up on google was about his frozen head underneath the park like all these like websites and like yeah. forums and stuff would all come up like he's buried under the park or whatever frozen and then they come out with frozen and now when you google frozen disney all that comes up is obviously olaf and all that so the conspiracy theory is that Disney released Frozen so that they could cover up that conspiracy theory. Honestly. Hidden in plain I, sight. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely true that they yeah, that's true. to cover that up. But definitely. See, I don't fully believe the actual theory that he's like frozen. Frozen down but, there? Yeah. Yeah. Not that part of it, but I do but believe they covered that it Disney up. covered it up because mm -hmm. they didn't want the bad press yeah. from it. Yeah. I think that... I honestly think that his head might be down there. Personally. Well, I would have to look deeper into that one. Yes. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. So, moral of the story. The government, and as along with everybody else, pretty much, likes to hide things in plain sight. So. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Aliens are real. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Nothing is I'm real. I'm excited everything to see the picture. Yes. Please go look at Instagram. I need everybody to see Valiant Thor. I know you don't believe me, but it's real. He's real. The pictures of him are real. So, mm -hmm. I don't but know. But see, the fact that he looks just like a person is just like, hmm. Well, is it real then? So you think that they wouldn't look like people? Or like humans? I don't know. Also, okay, this is a random thought I just had while you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. whenever i think of aliens for some reason i don't think about them being in our solar system i think about them being some random planet oh me too me too but also i think that comes with like i mean if there really were aliens like wouldn't we have seen them already like in our solar system maybe I or mean, maybe. maybe they're maybe they're like not as advanced as us and can't get to space true or maybe they really are living underneath, um, what's it called? Where are they from? Venus. In Venus. Yeah. yeah. So, hmm. I don't know. I really don't yeah. know. But Oh, and isn't there a theory that um, some random planet had humans on it and then we, um, like, DNA or something got to Earth 
and we started growing there. Do you, do you know that theory? Oh no, I don't. I don't know if I do know that theory. I might need to get into that a different day, but Ooh. yeah, that seems very that. intriguing. So if if they on Venus they do look like us, maybe that was our home planet. Okay, now that would make sense. All right, all right. See, we're going into too many good ideas right now. I know. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting into too much at the end of this episode right now. Guys, I'm sorry. We gotta end I'm it. Sorry. We gotta end it. We gotta end it. All right, we're getting out of here. Our crazy ideas. We're we're done for the day. <laughs> I know. I gotta Let us go. know what you think, um, though. True about yeah. these stories. What happened to mm -hmm. those people? And is Valiant Thor a real alien? I don't know. I don't know to either one, to be honest. Yeah. True. And we know that I don't like that, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's our show and that's um, our show <laughs> i gotta go and watch lock and key with adriana yes she please to, yes i please, gotta start please go do that two. i already watched it the whole thing so <laughs> <laughs> um i will say nothing more about that um rate and review us on apple podcast mm -hmm. check out our instagram to see pictures and with that i'll see you guys next week okay cue the music